Hello and welcome to part one of a very lengthy Stuart Turner P5MA restoration. It's engine's 1963 model, it was given to me. And uh, well, the plan is to get it running. And well, it's in a pretty sorry state. I did take some parts off um, yesterday evening, Soaker and WD 40. So I'll show you what I'll take off. We got the starting handle and we got the top water jacket cover, pipe to pump to top of the engine, water jacket, and the head studs and nuts and bolts. I did shear one stud off, but if you see that shiny bit, that's all that was holding it on. And that looked like stainless steel, so quite surprised about that. And as you can see, we have trouble. As this engine is so severely frost damaged, here's the exhaust outlet for the engine threaded on there. This void here is meant to be um, <coughs> a water jacket with the outer casing, but you see it's full up with crud and it's had frost damage or rust at some time, as you can see. So that there is, um, well, knackered to be honest. Same story on the engine as well. We've got frost cracks here, crack there, cracks on the plate, massive great big hole there. Underneath, well, not pretty. Crack, crack. Well, not too bad this side, but the barrel's just going to need replacing. Uh, hopefully, that's probably the worst bit of the engine. Yes, it is seized, but we have got some movement in the gearbox. Let me just grab the starting handle here. Yeah. There you go, that's in gear. Can't rock it. Do that. It's a bit tight, but there you go. It does kind of turn. We've got the movements that way. Okay. So we've got forward reverse throttle lever. Doesn't seem to do anything. I think this here's meant to rub on it or something, so it sees, so I don't think that's nothing to worry about. As as you say, a lot of WD forty later it should hopefully be a good one. Well, that's the plan, so we'll get back to you when I start taking some stuff off. Well, I went to take off this old rotted out plate and as I was about to undo the nut, well, it cracked away. <laughs> yeah, the engine is literally, you could say it's literally falling apart, but we don't want to go that far because I hope it doesn't completely fall apart. It's pretty, yeah, it, it's it's best part of knackered. Hey, you can see the piston in there. Oh. I got the carburetor off. This kind of is free, just needs a little bit of work to get it right. The leaf is off, so the main job is get all the accessories off. I want to get the magneto off, test the coil, and see what's our problem with that. Probably going to be open circuit. I'm expecting the worst complete new rebuild mag, whatever. And, well. Yeah, it's going to be a little front project. It may take me 20 years, it may take me two, it may take me a few months. But, I'm not getting my hopes up. So, I'll continue on working. Okay, got the gear selector thingery, majiggery or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's inside what I can see of the gearbox, the selector thing. It just moves that backwards and forwards, I suppose. Something like that, and selects the gears. And uh, here's the fork. Not too bad, and it looks fairly clean-ish. I say that. So we'll just give that a good clean up and uh, a bit more. I'll try and get the mag off. It's like loose, but there's. Uh, try and lift it up. I thought this would be seized, but it's not. 
so it's just where it's a bit of wobble. But for what it is and where it is actually, it's not too bad because you're only going to turn it when you're starting it. So I ain't too fussed about that. I uh, don't know what all this lot is in here. I suppose it's some sort of filler plug. I don't know. Hmm. In the book. Yeah, so, uh. See what else we can get off. Hopefully, i try to get the head off. But if we can strip much of the accessories out as possible. Uh, we'll go from there. Also, someone tell me. What size that flowing nut is? 30, I've got a 36mm socket, but that's a bit wobbly on it. Um, yeah, and also what thread it is, left hand or standard. Because, well, we need to get it off so we can see what we're doing. So, uh, I'll keep trying to get the water pump off. There's a nut pack there stuck. Trying to get that off. It's all a bit higgledy piggledy. There's no organisation, but it's just going to come off anyway. It's going to come to pieces, so it doesn't matter which way I take it apart. But, oh well. You see that? This is spec plate. 600, 1650 RPM, 5 horsepower. P5MA. Serial number 11A. 685 so that's 1968 apparently so we shall continue on dismantling well I got the starter shaft off which was not too difficult really apart from there's an awkward nut to get at uh, down there and also the fact the chain was seized on the sprocket. I was having visions this chain here, I would have to get a new one, but I may get a new one, like brand new, get on that length, or I might see if I can salvage it, I'll see. It's a bit, it's not too seized, but I'll probably just try and uh, free it off and use it again. If not, I could, I'll just get a new one. I don't mind getting a new one. You might, if you're going to do the engine, you might as well do it right. So, uh, yeah, see how it goes, because, well, look at that bit. Dead straight, dead seized. Just wants a little tiny bit of WD 40 sprayed on it. And it might. Other penetrating fluids are available, but, well. There you go, look at that, see, told you, it does kind of work, kind of, see, yeah, who knows, I could have just sprayed it this engine with WD-40 and it would have started running, yeah, well, I'll continue with progress, so, catch you in a minute, well, then. the pump's off, and, well, she's a bit tight, but she's wearing in a bit more, and probably years since that last move, the person I gave it to me said it hadn't moved, it uh, hasn't ran, was taken out of service and put in a shed for 25 years. And the reason why I've got such severe frost damage is due to it not being properly drained out. But I think as well, because this worked off the shore of Land's End, hauling lobster pots, powering the boat, only a little small boat, it um, had salt water in it and that obviously led to a bit bit of corrosion. So. Uh, that's also probably another reason why it's a bit, yeah, the, the rust has probably expanded and uh, caused it to, uh, um, well, well, expand and crack the thing. And here we have, and here is, it's quite clean really. There's a timing chain in there, which I didn't expect to find that. So we've got a timing chain driven off the uh, crankshaft. And then we've got the gear there to drive the, um, whatever you want to call it, the uh, um, water pump, that's it. I'm trying to think of the name. So let's upright the engine. <coughs> I haven't got my tripod, so it's a bit not my standard YouTube. 
glamour, so yep. So it's that. It's mm, free, so, so just need now to try and get the mag off. So we'll see what we can take off now. Here we go, look, the mag's off. And to be honest, it looks pretty gummed up. So what we're gonna do is fortunately I got a spare SR mag so I could change the impulse over and play around with the impulse or if it runs the right way I'll just swap the uh, entire mag over and be done with it because well that looks pretty yeah unpleasant I assume coils open circuits so I have to get another one but I don't have one of those uh, there's a coupling which looks not bad Bakelite, so not in bad condition. The remains of the the rim that went that went around the uh, impulse there. So that's good. That's shot, but it's all going in there for a minute. So I'll continue on stripping. More down. done to it. I've taken this cover off. It came right on the back of the manifold into the crankcase. Doing a two-stroke and. Well, it looks a bit weird because it's got this here as like a deflector which forces it in that way and all this void so it's a bit it's a very fancy casting so uh yeah I don't know what that is if anyone can tell me why that's for like that or whatever yeah it'd be nice to know because it's well full of surprises this little engine is I didn't add a timing chain it's got that it's well it's quite surprising really how it looks complicated but how simple it is so I'll continue on with the restoration or dismantling should you say well I'm draining the oil and it looks very clean to be honest and the camera batteries are dying so I can't be very much longer so I suppose this wraps it up for part one of the Stuart Turner restoration hopefully more to come